It makes it a lot easier to be like trapped in the house with these little monsters because they keep me busy, right? What's going? What's going on, Vito? You cool? Here we go. You want the full view? Coffee. Hey everyone, I am not in the test kitchen. I am in my home kitchen. I'm in the desert. I'm here at home. Still at my parents' kitchen in South Jersey. We're working from home these days, and I'm gonna show you my coffee routine. This is the first thing I do in the morning. Hi. Very important. I'm gonna show you how I make mine at home. Yeah, that's better. Coffee. How do I make coffee? I guess I'll put the knife down. It's a little aggro, as the kids say. Today, what we're gonna be doing is making my perfect coffee. Just so happens, I've recently invented, <laughs> you might, I don't know, someone must have done it, for God's sakes. But I'm gonna just say I recently invented a coffee drink called, I call it the Cafe Ooh La La, okay? I only drink coffee in the morning, okay? I'm not an afternoon drinker every now and then, but I like my two cups in the morning. So I usually do a drip. But then I got this little machine here, a little espresso machine. And I don't really drink too much espresso. But I really love is the, is the, um, is the steam. Barista Brad makes it happen. No big deal. So the Cafe Ooh La La is just drip coffee, steamed whole milk. And then I get brown sugar, dark brown sugar, or light, whatever you're into. And I shave, I get little shavings, and I just drop it onto the steamed milk on top of the coffee. Let's make this thing. Let's yeah, we're going to make it, Dan. All right, well, let's see it. I got the drip coffee already made. Check this out. This thing's great. Going to steam some milk. Fill this up about, you know, uh, a little bit over halfway, okay? Lactose free. My one kid lactose intolerant. What are you going to do? And we're just going to steam it. I'm going to go on a little angle. Just dip. There we go. We're hot. You don't want to go... Getting all bubbly, you want to, you want to, frothy, right? Not big bubbles, but like mousse. I don't know if you're supposed to use cold milk or, uh oh. All right, I think I did it. Look at that, nice. Look at that, nice frothy. This is great, guys. Look at that, beautiful, nice froth. So here we go. Got my cafe ooh la la mug. Okay, my coffee. Fill that up. Oh, leave a little room for our ooh la la. Okay, this is, how I, this is where I always screw it up. It's getting a nice. Oh, I nailed it. Oh my God, I did such a good job. So what I do sometimes, everybody does this, I don't care, unless you're really good. And look, I just, oh, look at that. Oh my God. And then the little brown sugar. Oh my God, that's it right there. Little brown sugar just sits in there, little pillows, okay? Good angle, huh? I'm a good camera guy. Landscape. Oh, take two, look at that. That's the stuff. It's like a dessert. You can't have this for breakfast. That's like eating, that's like eating candy for breakfast. Look at this. This is a dessert, this is a dessert, a delicacy. I like this. You know, take your first sip there. Yeah, look at these guys, huh? You guys working hard or what? We're watching you work hard. But I did a good job too. Oh man, it's heavenly. Suitable for a king. That's it, perfect, perfect. My perfect coffee. Cafe ooh la la. Camera cuts. If you know me, you know I don't drink coffee. I drink our national drink from Argentina, that is mate. I love the smell, I really do. Mate is a traditional tea, uh, drinking a special mate cup and mate bombilla. Mate is something that is drink in South America, the south of Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, and in some parts of Chile. See my mate cup collection, they are very interesting looking, covered with silver with very intricate work. This one is made of glass and covered in leather with like cute little doggies around. This guy is the one I love. So the bombilla has two holes. One is that where you're gonna drink like any other straw. And the other, it has all these tiny holes, like the tea baskets you will use when you make loose tea. It's the same idea. So if you were going to compare it to something, I will compare it to like a green tea. It does have caffeine, but it doesn't have the same amount of octane that coffee does. So to make the mate, you are not supposed to fill up this cup all the way to the top. So I put four of these because you're gonna be adding the water and the mat is gonna expand. You don't want it to overflow. The one thing that we like to do in Argentina is shake it to remove any excess powder. You can see it on my hand. 
and then you're ready. You have to tilt the mat a little bit so you have a little diagonal and then you insert the straw slow stream you don't boil the water i put it at 180 degrees in one side and then you're ready to rock and roll the dry mate goes up and the wet mate stays in one corner it's not that you put the water and you drink it once perfect you continue to drink throughout until the mate leaves just don't give flavor anymore this is a mood guys you don't know it oh i'm still shooting <laughs> My coffee routine is actually my husband's coffee routine. I drink black tea in the morning um, with milk and my very nice husband often brings it to me while I'm still in bed because I'm the queen of the house and that's how that goes. So when I want to um, be really nice to him and repay some of this tea in bed that I've been getting, I make him a really nice AeroPress. We've been making coffee with this thing for a, many, many years, and it's also amazing if you're ever on the road or camping. And I actually take a lot of pleasure in um, doing it with the timer and the scale and the whole kit and caboodle. It's got the kind of main chamber thing. They sell paper filters, but we switched over to this like fine mesh stainless steel filter, and that sits on top of this. So you put the filter into the bottom tray. You attach that to that and then the other piece is a plunger and it's got like a hard rubber stopper majiggy and then the other piece is this paddle which you use for stirring the grounds into the water i feel like i read something about the inventor like is he like an aeronautical engineer type of guy yeah i keep thinking i'm gonna come up with some great invention i just <laughs> haven't come up with it yet okay so the first thing i'm gonna do is preheat the cup. Preheating the cup makes a huge difference in how hot your coffee is when it hits the cup and how hot it stays. I'm just gonna fill that cup up. So now I need 18 grams of coffee. Nailed it. The cup feels hot on the outside. Dump out the water, set the thingamajobber on top of the cup. I am gonna start the timer. So the first thing is just a little bit of water to bloom the grounds. It's important. That's been about 10 seconds. I'm gonna pour. This is supposed to take about 30 seconds. It gets stirred for five. And then you use your little stopper bopper to just create like a vacuum seal. So now we wait 90 seconds. No one's really timing me, but I think that was about 90 seconds. Take the plunger off, but keep it nearby. Take the stirrer guy, give it another stir. That's done. And then you plunge. One thing to look for is that the coffee grounds form a mound when you get to the bottom and then listen for the hiss. As soon as you hear the hiss, you're done. All right, so that's it. Regular cow's milk. A delicious cup of coffee. It's the color he likes. Fred! Fred! He's on a call. Should I drink his coffee? <laughs> what are you gonna do? I truly believe that once you experience truly exceptional coffee, it's very hard to ever go back. And I'm not saying that I won't happily get some Dunkin' Donuts on a road trip. That's a beautiful experience, and I don't mean to minimize that for anybody. When I left my apartment in New York City, I had to choose the things that were very important to me, things that I felt very passionately about, and clearly my entire pour-over setup <laughs> was one of those things. So I make my coffee with a little ceramic pour over cone. This is a Hario V60 ceramic filter holder. I like a Hario V60. They make a glass version. I've been traveling around Mexico for the last six months. So I found this, a silicone collapsible V60. Here's the thing about great coffee. It's a little bit about the coffee. Well, it's a lot about the coffee. Beautiful, lovely, coffee. Never buy pre-ground coffee. The minute you grind a coffee bean, the flavor is essentially leaking out. And it's a little bit about the equipment, but actually it's a lot about the equipment. This is my kettle. I do find it really important to use a kettle that has this particularly thin kind of spout. Oh, that is very hot. I don't have my kettle at home, so all right. Right now I have my kettle set to 207 degrees. Let's call it 206. A little bit below boiling. I am going to grind my coffee beans. This is a burr grinder. A burr grinder means that there are actual circular burrs that turn 
in opposition to each other. Think of it like a pepper grinder. This is actually Chris Morocco's old grinder, which he gave to me because he like didn't want it any anymore. He probably bought some like much fancier one. I have a Breville burr grinder. Even this is key when it comes to coffee. I don't have an electric grinder. I have this guy. You could grind other things in here if you wanted to, but this has only been used for coffee. I would like to go on record saying that. I generally use about three tablespoons. I'm going to measure my beans by weight by using a scale. I keep a little scoop in my jar. Two of these is roughly like 21 grams. I'm not a fanatic about my coffee in the way that some other people are. I know like Delaney and Chris Morocco would freak out if they knew I wasn't using a scale. I'm using 20 grams of beans. So anyway, that's how you grind the beans. This guy just comes off. There's a bunch of ground coffee. It's not super fine. It's not super coarse. It's so good. Okay, back in my coffee cabinet, this is also where I keep my coffee filters. I like these ones, they're the brown ones. So I love pre-wetting my filter. Sometimes the filter can have a little bit of a papery taste, which is not pleasant. It kind of just flushes it out. So beans are going into the filter holder. Pop my beans in here. So now, I'm gonna bloom the coffee. I wanna wet the grounds, but without actually pouring water through them. It basically opens up the coffee and gets it ready to actually be brewed. This, I usually let hang out anywhere between 40 seconds to a minute. And now I'm gonna start my first pour. We wanna go to 352 grams. 22 times 16 is 352. I guess in total, I feel like this takes about two minutes. Try and go in a circular motion, although there are mornings where I just kind of dump it in. It's sort of a nice meditative time, and it's nice to just... Normally, I guess what I would be doing is not, not staring into my coffee. I would be like frantically emptying the dish rack or unloading the dishwasher or something, but... Almost there. Oh, nailed it. 352, the touch of a pro. All right, so our extraction went to about three minutes, 10 seconds, inclusive of the bloom. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like morning, even though it's noon. It's 5.20. If I drink this right now, I am not going to bed until like 3 a.m. Okay, all the water's through. The most important step when it comes to coffee is drinking it out of a mug that you like. And that's, for me, like a novelty mug. Something you'd buy at a souvenir shop or the airport or whatever, uh, or your local public radio station. My director informs me that Delaney said something about the best mug being like a shitty novelty mug with something stupid on it. <sighs> Delaney. This is a Lale ceramic mug. Uh, it's from upstate New York um, in the kind of greater Kingston area. I hate a fancy coffee mug. Look at that, perfect amount. This size is perfect for a 320 gram pour over. It smells so good and I cannot drink it right now. It would be so bad. It's 520. I'm gonna drink a little bit. That is so good and I'm gonna have to stop drinking that. Kind of green apple flavor with a little bit of milk chocolate. This shit tastes like fucking blueberries and it's incredible. Oh, so good. That's a perfect cup of coffee. Today we're making one of my favorite morning beverages. I'm not much of a coffee drinker, but I love chai. This is kind of the shortcut way that my mom makes it at home because when we're in the morning and we need our boost of energy, we like it fast. <laughs> it usually involves black tea, milk, spices. The spices vary, but the way that we make it at home, we focus on one spice, which I think is the star of chai and that's cardamom. So you're gonna start with black tea and then you're gonna just crush cardamom pods. You don't need to remove the shell or anything. You're just gonna give them a nice pounding so that they've released the seeds. So I just put these shells in all. Chai is traditionally sweetened. We add quite a bit of sugar, like a heaping, heaping teaspoon, but you do you. Some boiling water on top. It's nice and steamy. So we're gonna let that steep for like a minute. This is like that weird downtime in the videos where I say stupid things that end up in the video, so maybe I should not say anything. What's on your mind? <laughs> We're done steeping. Just top it off with as much milk as you want. That's what it's supposed to be. A dark tan, but you can make it more or less milky. Mm. 
This is probably not anything the aunties back in India would approve of. It's a very shortcut version, but I think it's delicious. It's a nice little alternative to coffee. And yeah, I drink it every day. Mmm. Use fresh cardamom, people. Mmm. I like to start every day off with a cup of coffee. I'm pretty particular about it. I don't really love espresso, unless it's like a cappuccino. Um, but that's, to me, more of an afternoon coffee. I like my first morning coffee to be American drip coffee with hot whole milk in it, sometimes half and half, depending on the coffee. This tiny corner of my kitchen is the coffee and tea area. This is my Chemex. It just makes a drip coffee. This cone I like because it's metal with tiny perforations, and so I don't have to reuse a paper. I don't have to use a paper filter every single time. I can just wash this and reuse it, which is wonderful. And then I have a crock of tools, so I'll move that out of the way. A burr grinder. I just eyeball this part. And in fact, I am guilty of making coffee that's too strong constantly. I eyeball this part too. I do a couple of tablespoons. This is how much I filled it. I can't imagine what Chris Morocco's coffee routine is at home, but one of the most endearing, most Chris Morocco things ever was when he brought his whole coffee setup to Cape Cod when we shot Making Perfect and then opened like a little coffee bar in the mornings in the hotel. I like to heat up the milk so that the milk doesn't bring down the temperature of the coffee. I'm always shooting for this very particular temperature for, of coffee where you can, it's really hot, but you can kind of gulp it. It's just perfect. So I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for maybe 30 seconds. And while that's heating, I'll start to pour the water. One thing I've learned from watching people in fancy coffee shops is that it's good to sort of moisten all the coffee grounds first in a circle. I don't know why, I've just seen people do it. Whatever. Um, my thing is like, who has the coherence and clarity of mind to do all that in the morning before you've had coffee? To do all the weighing and the proportions. That seems crazy. That's plenty for one cup. I'm gonna grab my milk. And then I slowly pour, I love this little pour spout in the Chemex that makes it very precise. So I'll hold this up so you can see. And then I like pouring the coffee into the milk because then I stop once I get the right kind of color. I like it to be pretty light. I love milk, I've always been a milk drinker. That looks perfect. And then that's it, I'm gonna drink this whole cup of coffee because I've been waiting until I've had to show you to have my coffee this morning, even though it's almost two o'clock. But this is the life of self-isolating, so you can drink coffee any time of day. Perfect temperature, all right? When I'm at home, I have an espresso machine and every morning I make an almond cappuccino. I'm not home, there's no espresso machine here. It's also a little bit warmer here because I'm in the desert. So today I'm gonna make a cold brew soda, which is basically equal parts cold brew coffee and tonic water with a squeeze of lime over ice. Got my tonic, got a lemon, and then this has just been straining cold brew for the last couple of hours. It's concentrate, it's really intense. I'm cutting one lemon into wedges because I'll have that as a garnish and then squeezing the juice of half a lemon into this cup of ice, catching the seeds. And then I'm gonna fill it about halfway with my cold brew. And if you can't find tonic water right now, what you can do instead is top it with soda water, seltzer, sparkling water, and then just sweeten it a little bit with like agave or honey or simple syrup to balance the acidity of the citrus. So there it is, my coffee soda. Tastes just like the test kitchen. Miss your test kitchen. I really do. We are all demonstrating our favorite ways to make coffee, but I don't really drink coffee, so I'm gonna make a white Russian. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm drinking a lot more, so a white Russian in the morning doesn't seem totally out of reason. My working from home drinking rules is I still don't start until like, maybe instead of five, like four. I'm one of those people when I have a lot to drink, I seem exactly the same, but nothing in there is working. So I don't really like to drink and work, but I like to know that it's here for me. So a white Russian is usually Kahlua, vodka, and cream. I think all of those things are disgusting. So now I'm going to show you how I like to make a white Russian with coffee. Craft coffee that then they turn into booze. Like, how can that be bad? And then in place of the vodka, I prefer to use bourbon. Equal parts of both and then a splash of cream. This is an antique jigger. 
It's completely inaccurate. I just like using it, it makes me feel old timey. I think this might be an ounce. So I'm gonna crack my ice cube a bit before I throw it in there. So it kind of melts a little bit while it's chilling the drink. So I'm gonna stir that up. You wanna stir your drink so the spoon moves along the outside of your glass. You're kind of just pushing the ice through the drink. And we're just gonna do that until the mixing glass feels cold. That's how you know that your drink is cold. Now, I need a second giant ice cube. Once again. Oh, my dogs are really into this. There we go. So I'm gonna strain this into this glass now. And then finish it with a little bit of cream. Just a little drizzle on top. So this is not your classic white Russian. I'm sure people will get mad at me, but it's the one that I wanna drink. It's the coffee drink I want. <laughs> It's really tasty. The coffee liqueur is so, so good. It just tastes like cold brew, whiskey, the cold version of an Irish coffee. My normal coffee routine is very, very simple. I just do eight cups of water in the base, cover that. The filter over here just goes on top like that. I'll do eight scoops, one scoop per cup. Put the top on, slide that in, lock it, and then just turn it on. Now we wait. This is Goldie. She's perfect. She's beautiful. And she has a natural smoky eye. <clears throat> okay. I would say the biggest difference between the coffee I drink back in New York and at home is that I usually drink it with like a splash of oat. If I don't have oat, I'll do almond. Um, this uh, is a half and half house, so I've been drinking half and half and I have absolutely no regrets and it feels fucking fantastic. So, it wasn't that hot. Okay, coffee time? Hey everybody, uh, so I'm going, hey everybody, I'm in my home, Hey everybody, I'm in my home kitchen and I'm gonna make a pot of coffee the way that I do pretty much every morning and every afternoon. The thing that I care about the most is making sure my coffee stays hot for as long as possible. So here I have like a vacuum insulated carafe. Cause I like to drink like a little cup of coffee and then like wait a half an hour and then drink another little cup of coffee. Just filled that with like nearly boiling water. One of my biggest pet peeves is making coffee into a cold carafe because then it's just sucking all the heat out of your coffee and like your first cup is lukewarm. So I've got a little brown paper number four filter, my trusty Melita plastic dripper. I used to have the like fancy ceramic or glass ones, but they all broke. So I'm gonna rinse that, dump this hot water. We're gonna grind our beans. I really think the biggest thing is just making sure that you're grinding your coffee fresh every day. Okay, cool. Sling that into our clean filter. The first thing I'm gonna do is just pour a little bit and kind of like bloom them. Okay, so now we're just gonna keep on refilling this right around the sides. <sighs> keep on adding water as it drains out. Oh, I'm gonna take this time to preheat my mug. This is non-negotiable. I love having really hot tap water for this reason. I'll just fill this up and let it sit until I'm ready to pour into it. So our grounds are dry now. All the coffee's dripped off. Close the lid. Dump the water from my preheated cup. And that is how I make a pot. And that is how I make a pot of coffee. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good, that's a cut. Mm. Me cut. I'm like waiting for someone to cut for me. 